How we doing, Steve, etc. Subscribe, like. I've been looking at random melody generation and also a great exercise in having a look at the MIDI devices available before you go off and start creating things yourself that are already actually created. But still, I've created some different things outside of it, so I'm going to show you how you can generate random melodies to add a little bit more interest and get you inspired into creating because there's nothing worse than looking at a blank screen, not knowing where to start. So these random generators should help you to get that start that you need and get going. I've added quite a few, there's a free download of it, so get into it. Right, so the thing I should have actually looked at first was the MIDI effects that are available with Ableton because you can do random generation with these things that are there. So this is just, I've just got an operator set up. It's a fairly basic patch. It's not really pleasant to listen to, but I've stuck an echo on it so it works. So if I play that, we've just got C. But what I've done is I've highlighted them all and I've taken the chance down to 41%. See, it's not going to be firing all of the time. So all you need to do is highlight all of them if you want to have it 100% rolling melody, drag it down for something a bit more sparse, nothing too difficult there. So moving out of that, we've just got the random device, which is here. You've got different settings, but I just downloaded it normally. 100% um, chance, 12 choices, and it's set to a minor scale. So we're playing C minor at the minute. And we can just flip that bass if we want to change the scale. Brilliant. Dead easy to use, no problems at all. If you want a different scale, just go into the scale plugin and you can drag the major in there if you want to. Or loads and loads of other different scale ideas. It'll just get you started. Now to record that MIDI, I've set up the MIDI channel here and you can see that the input is that, which is generator one, I've called it. If I just click on that track, click on record, there you go. So we'll click on that clip. That's recording all of the MIDI that's put into it. Do as much as you need, as little as you need, or listen, and when you get something you like, great. Stop on that, isolate that section, build on it, and do a little bit more. So what we are working in here is 16th notes. So now we have an operator with a basic sine wave patch. And if we play this MIDI channel, excellent. That's all that MIDI captured. Now say that all I actually want is section that five there i like the look of brilliant i can right click on that crop the clip and there we go we've got one bar of 16th notes and then what we can do is actually go in there and say well let's play around with that a little bit great nice little ditty not really to my liking but you know you get the idea you can start building on that start putting a few extra notes in and because we know we're in c minor put on the scale c minor there we go and we can't make any wrong notes we can even change the scale on there and then everything that we put in, we can drag another note in there if we want to put it up there. And you end up with something a little bit like this, which is, I've got no idea what it's doing, but you get the idea. Another thing that we can add for a little bit of variation is the chord device. That's playing with C minor scale. Three semitones, which is the minor third. It's not going to sound great because a few of the notes are out of scale, but you get the idea. You could actually put that on the seven semitones, the fifth. And it's already always going to sound relatively nice. You have to be fairly careful with that, but it can give you some good inspiration. So if we wanted to go for that with, we'll take plus four semitones and we'll record that into the MIDI there. Sounds very 90s house, doesn't it? And you can see in that we've recorded multiple things now from that one thing. So you could go in there, say, right, I'm actually going to have that loop there. Right click, crop the clip. Brilliant. You've just written yourself a 90s house tune. Repeat that for three and a half minutes. A seed. So before I realized all this, I was thinking how I could do random note generation myself. And I started off looking at the 16th notes here. So you notice I've got the scale function on, turned down, so we're only looking at C minor notes. And I've taken each of those and assigned it a chance of 4%. Now, the operator that I've got on this channel has only got one voice. So there's only ever going to be one note playing at a time, but we can up that. And it means sometimes we'll get a random two voices playing, which is something you can't actually do with a mini plugin. They're just going to give you kind of... The, the way that they're set, so they're not going to give you the scale version. If, even if we use the chord plugin, it's not going to do it in the same way. So you get some quite interesting things, and again, we just set that. Brilliant. 
we'll stop that. Now if we go into this MIDI clip, you can see all the notes are there. This gives you that little bit of extra inspiration. You're adding notes, you're adding things in there that you can play around with. And this is obviously all diatonic, keeping within the scale. I did the same here with eighth notes. Something you can play around with a little bit. And a pentatonic scale, so you're only getting the notes which are very tonic. You can kind of use it like a wind chime type thing. Same with the eight notes. I scattered them around a little bit as well, so you get variation in the sound that you're going to get rather than just a plain sound. And I've also added an echo unit because it sounds an awful lot better when you put it through a ping pong. And that's how it starts to get a little bit more inspirational. Now, I've also put in the instrument rack for the operator here, a randomizer. So you can get a completely different sound, have a little play around. It gives you a little bit of something to have fun with rather than just a basic patch. That sounds good to me. Then I put them in blocks of single notes. So what we're doing is we're biasing the selection of the randomizer. So it is random, but we're biasing the selection and limiting it to that, limiting it to that number of notes. And we can easily change that up, and it gives a lot more pleasant feel to it. It's not jumping around completely randomly. We're controlling the range on each single note that it's allowed to go within. And again, I put multiple blocks of six notes each all keeping within C minor skill. So you end up with something that sounds a lot more pleasant. And it's something you can work on a little bit more because the melodies that you get produced are a lot more easy to kind of grasp. So if we go to here, I've used a one, four, five, four chord progression which is the 1st, 3rd and 5th, and I've just extended that to the 7th and ninth of the C minor scale. So I've done that, the 1st chord, the 4th chord, start on the F, 5th chord, the G, back to the 4th. And that creates this beautiful tonic feel, and again, it's something you can't do with the MIDI effects. It sounds really nice, and it's something you can get creative with as well, because even though you're getting very tonic, diatonic progressions, it's something you can begin with and start to kind of work out of as well. Did the same with longer notes here. All the notes are longer. Some of them will cut the other one out. Mixed notes, some long, some short, just to give you a little bit of variation. These ones, making sure that no notes repeated twice, just alternating the two of them. These ones with a bias towards certain notes, so it kind of goes up and down, up and down, gives you a little bit of something else to work with there. And I also provided them in a major scale. So I'll put the echo on for this as well. The 16th and a major, the 8th pentatonic, and then the scattered ones, just scattered in a different way. So the idea behind the scattered was just randomly removing notes, just give me a bias again in the way the melodies work, but you can target this a lot more as well, which I'll show you in a couple of the other ones. Now, if we go into the atonal, playing all the notes at once, and this is quite useful for things like techno if you want to create a pattern out of it. So if I put that on, that's just all over the place. Now, if I record the MIDI from that, You'll notice it's actually recording multiple notes because the operator that I've got on the Gen 3 is actually just set to play in one note. However, the MIDI that's being generated is multiple notes. So to use that, you would have to go in and really just delete notes at random. So we take this one section here and play. And there, that does what a lot of random generators will do, It'll give you a completely atonal thing that you can use as a techno rhythm in the background to something. And you can start moving notes up and down and getting them a little bit more in scale so the deviations aren't quite as big. So the other thing I did with the atonal is that you can use this and have a bias towards certain notes. So if we play that, you can see we've not got any low notes playing around here, nor high notes playing around these bits. You can kind of bias what your random generator is going to throw out. So you're kind of fixing the game a little bit. There's also pattern one where you can just delete some of the high notes there, delete the low notes there. 
and you're going to get something that kind of runs and you can make it more in keeping with your track if your track kind of goes a little bit low at the first four bars and then goes higher up the octave skills afterwards there you go you can set your chance to do it now what i've done on this one the high notes are set to four percent chance and the low notes are set to eight percent chance so you're only going to get the high ones playing at a different time so you can you just copy and paste all the notes like that to get them to go to chance and this one in scale so it's in the scale of a minor and the notes that are out of the scale of a minor have got a very low chance of hitting so predominantly we're going to have a minor playing so if i go on to this channel here and there's the a minor chord keep within the a minor scale Give you, you've got a really sort of off key feel but only every now and then off key so you can change a lot around with your chance parameters there to give you some really interesting things that you wouldn't normally do these things because you work diatonically pretty much all the time in a door that's kind of how you gear towards everything's in scale and you keep it in scale i also did this one for the phrygian until i realized that, that was completely pointless because you can just use the generator for it so that's just there as a complete yeah you know i did that so what i did instead was turn and remove some of the notes so instead of just getting the normal phrygian generator you're getting something which is kind of out there a little bit biased up to notes going up and down and then with this 16th one i made sure there was no semitone intervals next to each other just to keep it a little bit more tonic for this generator bit i did borrowed notes so scale of c minor we can see we've got notes in there but you can also see there's notes that don't belong in c minor because they're from c major so it gives you it's not massively pleasant i'm going to pop the echo on it so if you're working in c minor it's giving you those borrowed notes from the major chord but what you probably want to do is limit those borrowed notes so i did another one where i took out some of them only kept them on certain beats so you're still getting the c minor and you're just getting a little bit of the major or on this one where you're getting a lot less of the major. So these kind of should be usable. It gives a little bit of difference to your melody, borrowing notes from there. I did the same with D to F sharp minor, the share all the same notes apart from one, which is the G. So I've set the G to only play sometimes, but it's still by chance, so it's sometimes going to play it's a low chance that it's going to play so you just get the odd note that goes in there and takes it slightly out of that diatonic melody the same with a minor which shares two different notes and i did another variation of that one where i just kind of chopped into it and messed around with it now what you can do which works really well is to use it with chord progressions so this is a one four five four i added in the fourth note and i have put on the seventh note but it adds it, it kind of keeps it very nice and tonic sounding we'll pop the echo on again so we're still in the scale of c sharp minor it keeps it really nice and tonic but it's something different to what the midi effect generators are going to give you and now we can this is basically all the chords in the c minor progression you've got c you've got your d diminished you've got your e now you can use that to create what I've done here. This is the first, fourth and fifth chords in C minor, but extended. So you're getting these really nice tonic notes playing all the time if you've got a progression in C minor. So if I go into that saw pad again, so if I go in here and play a C minor, whilst we've got that playing. Notes that are going really, really nicely with it. But also adding a little bit of spice to it as well. I spent far too long doing this. So that's everything. Download the free um, pack, have a little play around with it. You can do a load of this and it should inspire you to kind of get creating and get going, which that's the goal of this, to throw it on, get something out of it, make sure that whichever one you're using, you're feeding it into the MIDI channel. The MIDI channel hasn't got anything on it, so you'll need to take that MIDI, drag it into an instrument, and 
there you go get creating thank you very much for watching see you later